God has an extraordinary plan for marriage. Each person was made by love and for love. And marriage is a meant to be a sign of God's love for the world. There's something compelling about the Catholic Church's vision that real love is possible, that you can say yes to marriage and really be in a lifelong union unto death. The goal of marriage then, as far as the spouses are concerned, is to get one another to heaven, to lead that life that God intends us to live. Marriage is a partnership, a union or covenant by which a man and woman establish a lifelong partnership ordered to the procreation and education of children. Throughout history and across cultures, marriage has been universal because it's a natural reality. It's built into God's very design for man and woman. But Christ elevated marriage. So now, when a baptized man and woman marry, they enter into a sacrament. And through that sacrament, they receive the grace they need to fulfill their vocation. A sacrament is a visible sign of an invisible reality instituted by Jesus, which gives grace. What's grace? Grace is supernatural power. So on the day that you get married, God gives you access to his power to love each other the way he's calling you to love each other and the way you deep down want to love each other. What is the purpose of marriage? Or philosophically, we call that the ends of marriage. The purpose of marriage in God's plan is clear, to have children, but also to be supporting. In other words, that the married couple should love each other faithfully and to the end, and for that love to be fruitful in children. What is love? Well, love is seeking the good of another, and I want to do something for them. I care about them. I don't even know that the modern world has a definition of marriage. I think part of the idea is actually to eliminate the word. Clearly, one of the things which is at the center of it is this is a relationship which, so long as you and I find this to be mutually beneficial, we'll stay in it. And the moment either one of us or both of us no longer find it mutually beneficial, then we end it. It's a consumer relationship. It's important to recognize that because of sin, it's difficult to live in accord with the truth of marriage. It's also important to recognize it's possible. And this is especially true for those who are in a sacramental marriage and have received the grace that comes with the sacrament to live in accord with the truth of marriage. Marital love must be free, it must be total, it must be faithful, and it must be fruitful. And that's because of the nature of love itself. Love must be free, it can't be coerced. Love must be total. I can't partially love, I have to totally love. And then if I totally love, then I'm gonna be faithful. Love has to be faithful to be authentic love. And if in marriage, the love between a man and a woman, if you're going to be free and total and faithful, then you'll be fruitful, you'll be open to children. Artificial contraception actually puts a barrier between that couple and God by trying to cut out the beautiful fertility that he has blessed you with. It doesn't mean that you have to have a child every time you come together. There are beautiful natural family planning methods which can be used. Natural family planning differs from artificial contraception because at no point are you ever trying to shut down your natural cycle or your fertility. I think the complementarity of men and women, the complementarity of husband and wife, it's so great. I think there is definitely an attack to strip everything, whether it's femininity or masculinity. It's just one of those things where God made man, God made woman. So how are men and women the same and how are men and women different? The church has always protected that men and women are equal in dignity, but the church doesn't mean by that sameness. So we need difference too, not just equality. The difference calls us to union as men and women. You know, with female and you know male, 
Him being strong, confident, he wants to protect, he wants to guard, he wants to provide, he wants to initiate. All these beautiful things that are so masculine. And then you have the woman who's the nurturer. She's the receiver and her heart expands with new life. The complementarity between men and women. I think this is the beauty of our Catholic faith, of our Christian Judeo heritage, to show that men and women are different and yet they're equal in dignity, but different in nature and in many attributes. Marriage is limited to the union of a man and a woman. For Catholics, this is obviously true insofar as it reflects the truth that marriage is ordered to the procreation and education of children, but it's also a reflection of the meaningfulness of our created condition as man or woman, that being a man or being a woman is not something we first choose, but it's a gift received that's reflective of the wise plan of the Creator. I am currently active duty Navy, submarine officer. I wanted to join the Navy probably in high school. Started that, went to the Naval Academy, which was a great experience, and then joined the submarine force. My first tour as a division officer on the submarine was out of Pearl Harbor. That's when Ashley and I met. I actually was talking to my priest about just the struggles of dating locally. And so my priest said, well, maybe you should try online dating. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just try it. Like, what can it hurt, you know? So I filled out a profile, got online. I was on for about six months, but I saw his picture in his uniform. I'm like, oh, you know, he looks cool. He looks cute in his uniform, you know, Navy. I'm, I'm patriotic and you know, he's in Hawaii, so it's probably not gonna work anyway. And I uh, sent Ashley an email on September 1st, 2009 with Howdy. And so that's uh, the story of our relationship. I had her. Yeah, we joked that he, he had made a Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> when we decided to stay in the Navy after we were married, you know, those deployments and whatnot oh, yeah. is kind of where it started to uh, stress our marriage yeah. more. Maybe before we even got married or before he was signing on to do it again, I would say, you know, I don't want to have a baby with you out to sea. It was really soon after I got pregnant, the schedule started to shift. It was becoming more likely that uh, my schedule was going to be such that I miss his birth. Building up, it was definitely difficult, realizing that uh, I was not going to be there. I really wouldn't accept that it was even a possibility. Jimmy talked to multiple people within the Navy. Can he magically reappear for the birth and then even go right back out afterwards just to be there for the actual birth? The anxiety leading up to it is actually way worse than the actual event itself. And so while God didn't answer my specific prayer and bring Jimmy back for the birth, he answered so many other prayers. I was so at peace throughout the birth, throughout the labor itself and the recovery. It was my easiest birth. And, you know, no complications, no issues. It was so quick. Captain and I were on the con in the control room and the radio operator says, con radio receiving a special encrypted message. Mrs. Ashley Kepper asked to have her husband informed on the birth of their son, James Henry Kepper V, nine pounds, 11 ounces. My captain goes, whoo, boy, yeah, that's, a, that's a beast. He's a big boy. <laughs> My recovery was so easy and the relief I felt, I was just so at peace and I just knew God took care of me. So at the end of the day, I mean, I did get a miracle, my son, James, and God is so good. He's so, so good. He took care of me every step of the way. And then also there was a blessing that happened during that time. Jimmy's boat was expected to be gone for a month, you know, longer after, after, after the baby was born. And they unexpectedly came in early. James was sleeping in the little car carrier back in the living room and was wearing that onesie. You know, I've been waiting my whole life to see you, Dad, with American flags and red, white, and blue letters. And mm -hmm. that was a great solid week. It's harder for me to know that I'm not there. That connection in prayer, knowing that God's listening to you and listening to me at the same time, that keeps us united. God has definitely shown that this is the path for us. I feel like in the beginning, I was looking for Jimmy to fulfill you know, every need and desire I could possibly have. And I've learned that's not possible. It's not fair to Jimmy. I feel like I was so selfish. And looking back, I see how God has stripped me of that selfishness every day. You need to abandon yourself to my holy will and I will just take care of everything. 
God's who I need to be leaning on. The central focus of us coming back to prayer, we'll just say a prayer together and ask God for healing and recognition of where we come up short and grace to receive forgiveness from each other, offer forgiveness from each other and to, you know, go forward acting better and more charitable towards each other. And we'll do that as a family. How we manage to stay together is one through faith. I want to be a happy family and I know that our true happiness lies in God. Our common goal is to become a saint, you know, get our spouse to heaven, and help our kids get to heaven, and then for them to help us get to heaven. For couples that are starting off in their marriage, build that foundation on your combined faith together, because that is what's gonna sustain you. Ideally, there has been a lot of discernment that has gone into the decision of marrying somebody. It's important that the vision for family life between the spouses is a shared vision. And hopefully that vision will be grounded on the Catholic Church's teaching and vision for what marriage should be. Sacrifice is absolutely essential in marriage. The mutual sacrificing of the spouses we live in a culture that's very individualistic and self-focused. People tell you to do what you want, when you want, and take a selfie while you're doing it. But this isn't the path to happiness or fulfillment. And so in a marriage, husband and wife must give and sacrifice for the other. This is the mark of authentic love. Learn to pray together as spouses. That takes time. It's a real level of intimacy, prayer together but couples that learn to pray together do not divorce. So, rosary in the morning together, prayer before you go to bed at night together, whatever form that takes, because your intimacy will be something the enemy cannot divide. In today's world, it's very important that we are intentional in living our Catholic faith, because the many attacks that are waged on marriage today are just incredible. And so if we don't take the time to really focus on how it is that we're gonna defend our family from those attacks, we're gonna find ourselves getting lost. Entropy in physics means everything tends toward decay. Sun's gonna burn out, bodies age, iron rusts, relationships can tend towards lazy. Don't let the law of social entropy decay your marriage. Who would your spouse say that you treat the best? Would they say, boy, I'll tell you what, I wish I got half of the consideration that he gives to those people at work. You want your spouse to be able to say, my spouse treats me better than he or she treats anybody else. That's the ideal.